Yeah, you're in Timber, look happy there. Nearly as happy as when you watch a North London derby with Ian Wright. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good ball. Go. <laughs> Gabby! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes, Gabby! Set pieces again, baby! Come on! Colour the Gooners! Colour the Gooners! We're back! Back! You've never been away. Another quiet day. Oh, Another quiet day we're writing. A big week for Arsenal and a big win to start it and their third successive away win in the North London derby for the first time since the 87-88 season and it pops them back into second in the table after four games. Crucially, two points behind the champions, Manchester City, who, of course, they play one week from now. City, the only team left with a 100% record. Spurs left to reflect on and just one win now in eight Premier League meetings against Arsenal, yet again unable to find a breakthrough. We'll come to them in a moment, but there's the hero, the Brazilian Gabriel, with that goal after 64 minutes. How big a goal for a game you said they had to win, they have yeah. won. Massive, uh, massive goal. Fantastic performance from him. In fact, the old back four, I thought the Euro Timber was fantastic. Same with, same with Saliba. Um, I thought that Tottenham almost played into their hands a bit. They weren't playing the ball fast enough. They weren't playing through the lines. They weren't, even when they got the crosses in, they weren't great crosses. They cut out everything. I thought they were very much in control for a team that didn't really have that much control in the midfield, which I thought they would have with, um, with Jorginho and Thomas Partey. But in the end, um, I think it's, we deserve that. Arsenal deserve to win that. Statement win without two key players for Arsenal? Yeah, right? absolutely. That was the big question. Two big hitters who have performed so well for them missing. How would they cope? There's your answer. Without playing particularly well or having to play particularly well, the impressive thing about him and his team was how hard they were to beat, how good they were defensively. Um, yeah, they, they, they had all the right answers. I thought Tottenham were really poor again in forward positions, very much like they have been for most of this season, certainly at Leicester, Newcastle and again today. They just couldn't, they couldn't get past that back four, in particular him, who was outstanding. Did Spurs give their fans enough there today, Glenn? No, what I was disappointed more than anything was when they go 1-0 down. You're at home with all the fans there, the reaction was poor. It really was. They just kept plodding away. There was a bit of desperation in their play in the end. And there wasn't, like Alan just said, there wasn't enough creation in that last third. Any cross that went in just found an Arsenal man. There was no movement, there was no patterns of play. Um, they've, got to, they've got to make more movement off the ball when teams bank in against them to try and get in and seek in behind, behind that defence, like City do, on the edge of the 18-yard box. Spurs found that very, very difficult today. They created some chances, of course. They came out second half on the front foot. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, we look in the modern-day game how a team have won a game with the way they've played, with the flair, going forward, full-backs. Their full-backs, Arsenal's full-backs today didn't go over the halfway line. They didn't have to. They were solid, and I think they wanted to go there and play this that way. If we score at the other end, what we're going to be is solid here today. Our back four is not going to get dismantled. It's going to stay intact. And you know what? They won it. Yes, Gabriel got the goal, but they've won it because of the way they've defended. I think with um, when you look at, at this Arsenal side and what they've been through the last couple of years, that was the kind of performance that was a very experienced performance in respects of, yes, missing two really integral players. But again, you know, like I said at the start, the defence is playing so well. You probably can get away with a, a, um, a Jorginho and a Thomas Party. You need a little bit more up front, but I thought they dug in well because they, it's a new mentality what they've got. This Mikel Arteta side is not going to go there and not put that kind of performance in. Yep. Six away wins in a row. Let's see the North London derby smile from you. <laughs> there we go. Ian Wright, a very happy man. Arsenal into second. Stay with us. All the reaction. Congratulations to you both. Gabrielle, look like special celebrations with the fans at the end there. Yeah, I'm so happy. Um, we know it's a difficult game. It's a big derby. And, yeah, we're so happy to, to win here. And, uh, yes, let's enjoy, this game. Uh, let's enjoy now. What did it mean to score that winning goal? Ah... <sighs> It's meant a lot because uh, I'm so proud to, to, to the team. And when I have difficult, difficult time in the game, and yeah, we scored a, with a corner, and yeah, I'm so happy. 
goal, but also a clean sheet. Jorginho, you've come in today and been part of a huge team defensive effort. Just how hard have you had to work out there this afternoon? Yeah, we had to, to work really hard, as you saw. But we knew it was going to be a difficult game. Uh, when uh, you have the, these days that you need to work really hard, we know that we can count on each other, on our teammates, and uh, that's what we do. Uh, one more that we stick together, and uh, at the end, the pay work off. Uh, and uh, we so happy that we won, and I'm so happy for this guy that he scored a winning goal. With so many key players missing today, and a change in shape as well. How much of it was patience this afternoon, trusting in the process and the work you'd done on the training ground this week? Yeah, we. That's what I said. That we know that we can count on each other. Uh, now we have this. The situation that is missing key and important players for us, but we have a total team, uh, the whole squad, and uh, we know that who, whoever is going to come on is going to be ready to to help the team. And uh, as you saw today, everyone was was ready, and uh, I think we we are really proud of the team and happy. Well, congratulations to both of you. It's a great team performance. But Gabriel, you are the player of the match. Well done. Of course. Yeah. Well thank done. You. Congratulations, my friend. Another one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Let's enjoy. Of course he is. It's a day to remember for Gabriel. Let's have a look at the all-important header then and yet another set-piece goal and corner goal from Arsenal. Yeah, um, since, the, since, the, since, the guy, since he's come in, um, the set-piece coach, I think he's scored 42 goals since 2021. It's, the delivery, obviously, is fantastic, but the movement from him here, very surprised with Romero. It feels very easy for a defender of his calibre to be moved out like that. I actually thought that you know it, it could have even been a foul, but... Not enough, maybe, but I just that seems very simple. And when you look at the, the proximity to the goal to where he's headed it in, it's very, very easy goal for us to score. Yeah, it wasn't a foul, it's not enough, in it. Um, <laughs> if if yeah. Romero chooses to go over, then the referee's got a, a decision to make. But whilst he stood up and there was no way they were they were going to change his mind with the VA or anything like that. It's not enough to uh, to overrule that. It was great movement. There was one player who really, really wanted to get on the end of that, and there was one player that was happy to be shoved off it. Mm. And from Tottenham's point of view, to be undone in this kind of area, not a blistering goal, not an end-to-end counter-attack goal, would be a huge frustration, Glenn. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they must know that Arsenal are good from set plays, they've, and they've decided there. Last year, it was zonal from corners. This year, it's slightly changed. They've gone man-for-man man on danger men like Gabriel, and whoever's been designated to mark him, do your job. Mm -hmm. Do your job, not what Romero's done. And then there's other players now doing a little bit of a zonal. Last year it was solid, four of them across there and they got caught out. For me, the goalkeeper's got an Achilles heel here because other clubs have seen it. Any ball in that in-swinging area, into that six-yard box, I'm not sure he can come. There's too many bodies there, but his intent is to go back. He's never looking to come out. Look, he's, he's, he's involved in the sort of battle up. He's got to detach himself away from that and think to himself, where is my intent? My intent is his body's always going backwards. He's got to come and punch some of them balls. Not necessarily that one. That's a bit different. But this is big. They've played that corner because it, time and time again, he's conceded or he's looked, he flapped at one in the first half. I remember a corner came over and he said he didn't touch it. It wasn't convincing. And that's an Achilles heel he's got particularly. He's a good st st shot stopper, but he has got to come and make himself more physical, come and get more balls, come and punch. You ain't got to catch it. There's lots of bodies. Clear the area. And until he does, they're going to concede even more goals. Brilliant header. I mean, there, there are so many different things. You know, the, the, the ball has to come in first of all, then his movement, and then the timing of his of his jump to get away from the defender, and then the connection. It, it, it's a magnificent header, it really is. The, the desire to get on the end of it and shove everything, get out the way, I'm coming and I'm going to get on the end of it, no one's going to stop me. It's a superb header. But that's, that's the problem, you can't be unopposed. That's right. Well, if that's your goal is not coming, of, you mm, cannot be unopposed. Three of Arsenal's last four goals against Tottenham have come from corners. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's then you've got to do your homework and you've got to make sure that you're focused in on that scenario because you know you're going to concede some corners. And uh, that wasn't. That's the case. Romero, I don't know where he was. He, was, oh. he, he just switched off problem. completely. You cannot allow a free header from what inside the six-yard box from a corner. No way. I don't care what era of football you're in. 
you cannot allow that. Mm. And 15 Premier League goals for Gabriel, 10 of those have been headers. Yeah, well, again, like, you know, you look at what he, he's capable of in both boxes um, in, in, with his defending and once he gets in the box. And then, Steve, it comes down to the, the, the delivery. Saka's delivery was absolutely on point there. And, you know, that's why Arsenal scored so many goals because they, they work so much on them. They work a lot on those set pieces and they know in games like this it might be the difference and it was today. When, when, when you go one behind against this Arsenal team, you've got to do something special to get back because mm. it's very, very tough. They've got the best back four in the Premier League. There's no doubt about that. The way they operate, the way they work, the way they're protected. I mean, Spurs just didn't have an answer today, not for the first time this season, but in the end, this just ended up lumping balls into the box, which are food and drink to these two centre-halves, you know? They're big, they're strong, they, they, don't, they don't mind a battle. In fact, they love a battle and a challenge. And they just got rid of everything that came into the box. They were absolutely magnificent. Psychologically, to go and win without Wright and Erdegaard, two huge players who, as we mentioned, never, ever miss a Premier League game. Yeah. What, what, what will that do to the, to the whole group? Well, not only for the whole group, but for them too as well, because obviously they are arguably our best two players alongside Saka. Well, Saliba. With Saliba, so I'm going to go on now. So, <laughs> but, like, obviously them looking in, you, you, you need the team to be winning without your best, because, like I said at the start, you, you're looking to challenge Man City and you have to challenge Man City sometimes without your best. And... I'm not saying we played unbelievably there, but we got it done simply because the defence is so good and the set pieces are so good. So we've won that game and two aspects of our game that's improved over the last few years. And that is what's won us that game today. OK, let's get some Tottenham reaction. Here is their captain, Hyung Min Son. I'm sure you're hurting a third consecutive defeat here to your rivals. How do you sum up your performance this afternoon? Well, I think it was football was there. We dominate the game and... Uh... It's just a lack of the details and, uh, yeah, we considered the last season in the set pieces two goals and uh, like today so also we consider set pieces, that's all details uh, that in the big games uh, change the results and, yeah, it's really frustrated and it's painful results and uh, I'm sure the fans are also very, very disappointed and, yeah, I think, yeah, we got to we gotta improve, obviously, definitely, yeah, 100% and, yeah, we got to move on and, you know, in a tough moment we have to stick it together. I suppose a familiar feeling, you've said there, two common themes. It's another game where you've had a lot of shots, not managed to score and conceded from a set piece. Does the responsibility lie with the players? How, how do you see it? Well, yeah, definitely. I think because it's uh, until, until we, we, get, we are getting in the final, final set and we are getting, uh, getting it right, right shots and right decision. But I think, yeah, I think players have to take responsibility because it's... Uh, to get it there is, uh, I think, most uh, most hard, hardest hardest part. So, and we gotta be really sure in the training and in the game that we have to make sure that we gotta make uh, we are making a right decision and be more be more clinical. It's a similar a theme to what we've seen in every game from Tottenham. People saying they've got to yeah, be more. Yeah, uh, Leicester, <laughs> certainly Leicester, yeah. certainly Newcastle, certainly today. Um, certainly Leicester, yeah. certainly Newcastle, certainly today. Um, yeah. I mean, he, they did. They had possession. A lot of it was sideways, backwards. Um, and they did have a lot of ball in the final third, but their lack of quality, their lack of final cross or final pass or final effort at goal, we've, we've seen it too many times already this season. And um, that's something they're going to have to work on because that has to improve because teams will say, OK, we'll let you have the ball because you're not going to ask enough questions of us. And, and that's what's happened. It's happened today and, as I said, in the, uh, in the other two games as well. OK, well, I'll continue that theme in a moment. After we've heard from the winning manager, he'll be very happy. Three years in a row away at Tottenham. Here he is, Mikel Arteta. Congratulations Thank on you. another hard-fought derby victory. What's pleased you the most about that performance today? Well, the resilience that we showed, uh, we knew that was going to be a really tough match. It's always easier. They are a great side. They create an unbelievable atmosphere. We had some great moments, especially in the first half, when opening spaces that we should have done much more than, than we actually have done. And then we knew as well that we had a big threat on set plays and, um, and we believed that we could help them and um, we have done. And uh, we weren't the best with the ball today. We have done a lot of simple things wrong that doesn't allow us to have a lot of continuity. It's true that the, the sequence of passes that you can do against them are very few before you attack them because they jump and they press every single ball and <laughs> make it very difficult. But then the way we defend it as well, it was, it was total wrong. 
the first Arsenal manager to win three away derbies at Tottenham since George Graham. Yep. That's how hard it is to do. It is tough to do, but um, I think when you look at the way they play today, and as much as we, they, they obviously needed to create more chances, um, was it five shots? 15? Five shots on 15, target? No, that was Tottenham, sorry. Sorry, yeah. Tottenham, Four yeah. shots on target for Four us. shots on, no, I'm talking about with Tottenham and the chances they made. I think that, you know, for Dominic Solanke, for instance, that chance, I yeah. think for the, and, you know, I mean, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but for that money, you, you've got to take those chances. That's what Tottenham need. So that can get them going in the game and that can get confidence into the rest of the team. You have to take opportunities like that because otherwise then that crowd and the way that pressure comes in, everybody starts feeling it. And that's when they looked a bit tight and a little bit stiff and rigid with what they were doing. Is that a concern moving forward? For definitely, really? definitely. They're a team that can out-possession any team because they put their full-backs in there, you know, and they outnumber people. But it's the last third. They've got to have more better movement to get in behind people. They couldn't break... Spurs down. Uh, Arsenal keeping another clean sheet in a derby win. Jurian Timber was part of that and he joins us live now from North London. Jurian, well done. How does that feel to go to your rivals and, and get a result like that today? Yeah, really good for me the first time, obviously. Um, yeah. Now, it felt really good. We were really happy in the dressing room because it was a, a tough match and uh, yeah, we got it over the line. And to do it without such two big players in, in Declan and, and your captain as well. Yeah. Yeah, not only them, we're missing even more players. So we knew it was going to be a tough match anyway today. Um, yeah, but with any adversity, it's still, it's still a matter of winning uh, these tough away games. And we did that today. And another set-piece goal. I mean, I know it's something that the whole squad works so much on, but when it comes to fruition like that in such a key moment, it must be really satisfying. Oh, yeah, that felt really good because the, the game was so tough. Uh, we didn't really create a lot of chances. You know, you know you're not going to create a lot of chances here away at Tottenham. Um, and you know how important the, the set pieces are for us. And uh, yeah, we, we got it done again. He's, he's crucial, Gabriel, in those situations sometimes, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> what a guy. He's unbelievable. He's so good at defending, but in attacking with the set pieces, he's, he's, he's even more outstanding. And talking of defending, three clean sheets out of four games to start the season. You're giving yourself foundations to go and win games. Yeah, that's really important. I think we're, work, we're working uh, a lot on uh, defending uh, together with all the, team, the whole team. And we showed it today again, clean sheet. And uh, yeah, if you keep the clean sheet and you, you create chances, you know you have a big chance of winning. And uh, that's why uh, we won today. It's a big win at the start of a big week. So how important was that ahead of Champions League? And then, of course, a week today, you go to the Champions. Yeah, it's going to be a big week. Uh, it's nice to start it like this after the international break. Uh, but we got to take it game by game. And uh, yeah, on Thursday, we have, uh, we have Champions League ready, ready in Italy. Well, good luck with that. And very well done today. Thanks for Thank joining us. Thank you so us. much. Ciao. That's Jurian Simba, um, who's almost like a new signing, obviously, of that serious yeah. injury. He's, he's come in, he's playing <laughs> left back at, at the moment. He offers you great versatility. Yeah, he does, because he's, he's very good on the ball. He can play right, he can play right back, right full, like full back. He can play right centre back. You know, we've seen today left back, you know, very good in the one-on-ones. We saw that as well today when... The 1v1s and he's obviously going forward. He's a very good passer, great pace. You know, you know, we really missed him last season, so it's great to get him now. He is like a new signer. I, I, I think that's the big difference. We talk about the centre-backs, Saliba and Gabriel, good, good centre-backs, they really are. But it's the outside people. They've changed that Arsenal. They're, you don't see Timber overlapping and getting forward or being the wide man. They've got wingers to do that job. So they can sit in behind and make them... White's pretty much the same. Every now and again, he'll join when they play with a three in possession. Mm. But um, basically, they're never out of touch with their centre-backs. A, a lot of teams nowadays, they put their full-backs so high, they can't get back in the cover and they can't get near their centre-backs. Whereas Arsenal now have got it... Quickly, they're back into shape. Even when Spurs broke today and countered, that back four got yeah, yeah. pretty quickly because the distances they could get back into, into that back four weren't too far. So they've got it. They've got. They're ticking so many boxes with set plays, with the way they play going forward in certain games, defensively, goalkeeper thought, sound. Yeah, yeah thought he more than boxes. played his part today. I thought he was he was brilliant at, uh, at left back. Even when he got the yellow card in the first half, because we were all sat at half-time thinking there may be a red card coming here. Yeah. So he, he had to do really well and get his tackles and time them to perfection in that, in that second half, and I thought he did that really well. The local boys uh, means today he's trying to score in his third successive derby. Um, what does it feel like to score as an Arsenal player at Tottenham and win? It's, it's, it's amazing, man. It's because <laughs> because when, you, when, you, when you sign for Arsenal, it's like it's, 
the first thing they start talking to you about simply after is when you're playing Tottenham, what it means, how much it means to everybody in the club. And there's sometimes it's funny, you have a lot of Tottenham people who are working at the club as well. So you have to speak to them and what they're saying about what's going to happen, but how much it means to not lose it is what I found was something that I took in very quickly. We, you can't lose the game. That's the main thing. You can't lose the game. But playing at White Hart Lane was the best. You know, because you've got them all congregated just up in that little top corner. You know, they've been through a hell getting there and you just want to make sure that you do something not to let them down. It's amazing, the, the derby. It's the best. You go from one of the nicest guys from Saka to impossible not to like and you come back to the biggest <laughs> wind-up merchant <laughs> in football. <laughs> It's amazing. It was amazing, Tottenham. He's got a, an old head on young shoulders. Spurs are already sick of the sight of him, actually, aren't they? Yeah. Saka. No, last year he was different class, wasn't he? Yeah. But it was so good to see him when he was eight years of age, was it, in that picture, yeah. you know, in an Arsenal shirt, and he stayed there. And that's what it was like back in the day for me. It was it, it, The rivalry was amongst the players. They were all British players, mm. and we, we were brought up in the youth team. We were played Tottenham Arsenal in the youth team, in the reserves, and that meant... And yeah. it's the only game, really, where I actually used to lose the plot. I, I used to go on the pitch always thinking I was going to score today, I'm going to create. I'd go, my old mate Graham Ricks was on the other side and he played left side and I was right. We used to kick lumps out of each other. <laughs> it was one of them games where I didn't care what, how the game went, it was about winning mm. and just getting over the line and it was so physical back then. I think with the foreign, they know that it means a lot to the, uh, to the fans, still the same, yeah. and it does. But there's not, it was lovely to see Saka because of the feelings he's been brought up with it and now he's gone and scored a couple of, you know, he's, this could be his third game he scores in this London derby. But, you know, to the foreigners, they, they understand, they understand it means yeah. a lot to the, to the fans, but it's not like it was back in the day when that real rivalry was on the pitch, where everyone was Brit and they were brought up through the club. My word, there was some, yeah. uh, there were some poor games as well, actually. Mm. When I look back, it, was, it meant too much, you know, and you, you were put off our game. Mm. Getting back to Saka, um, just how important has he come to this Arsenal team now? For instance, they've scored all the goals this season. He's been involved somewhere along the line in all of them. Oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a magnificent talent, isn't he? I mean, his attitude... Just every, everything about him, he just gives off this f fresh feeling about football, you know, is that he, you can tell he, he, he just loves being out on the pitch, he loves the game. Everything about him, even as a, he's, when, when he's going in against Newcastle or whatever team, you just still have to admire him and like him and understand him. Um, uh, and, he's a, and he's a magnificent talent. Yeah, he is. He is. To be honest, is, when, you, when you consider... Um, what, what, when he got into the Arsenal side, where Arsenal were. And it was almost on him, him and Emil Smith Rowe's shoulders to try and get Arsenal through a certain period when the La Lacazette and Aubameyang era, in and around that time. When he was like 19, 20, they, they kind of like dragged the club through. Just, just being able to support them two kept the fans going to give Mikel the, the support he needed. Down to them two. I think also, I think one of the most important positions in modern day football is the opposite foot winger. You've got so many players like right footed playing on the left, left footers playing on the right, like Saka, and he's one of the best. Because it is a, it is a major, major thing now. You're getting goals. Salah, look, he's the best. Mm. You know, he plays on that right, he's all left foot. And it, you look at each team, and everyone's got one. And that's where they're becoming so important. And this young lad is so important for Arsenal with the way they play. Yeah. He comes inside on that left. If you can get players that can go on the outside and use their right as well, then you've got it all. Mm. But there's. We never thought that in years gone by, but they are becoming the most crucial players in those positions in the last third. Well, no goals, um, but they are the half-time stats in the North London derby. As you can see, five shots apiece, uh, three of them on target uh, from Arsenal. And at the bottom, seven yellow cards, five to Spurs. That is the joint most ever in a first half of any Premier League game. We'll get to that in a moment. There have been chances at both ends. Let's get a neutral view first. Alan, what have you made of it? I think from chances, I think Spurs have had the, the, the better of them. Uh, Brennan Johnson's had one, Kulusevsky's had one, and Solanke's had a really good opportunity where he failed to take it quickly, where Tottenham have pressed Arsenal really well. And some of Spurs' best players, when they've moved it really quick, you know, with a one-touch, two-touch play, mm. instead of the slow build-up. When, when that happens, that allows Arsenal to get men behind the ball. But they've caused them some problems. Martinelli's had the best chance for, uh, for Arsenal. Perhaps should have crossed it earlier to, to Saka. But um, not a lot in it. 
Mm. That has frustrated you. Could Arsenal have done better with their sightings in front of goal in that first half? Yeah, I, th I think with the the Martin the, the Martin early one especially, um, I think that was one. But like, I feel that the, the way the way it's going at the minute, you know, I, li I like the way Arsenal are playing. That's a great header from Kai. I think the goalkeeper's going to make that save. I think it's a fantastic header, edit where it's come back from. But like, I just believe that in games like this, especially with the the Martinelli chance, you have to get the goal. Get the goal in the bag, and then as time goes, you might get your chance. I think now, I think that comes across quickly. And then Saka then get, gets in there, maybe gets a shot on goal. You can see him with his arms outstretched. It looks like a doggy gets back in time. But I think if this ball comes across, Saka would have made it in front of him. I think he would have made that. But like I feel Martinelli in that instant, he should be looking to get the goal. What's going to give us the goal and then go from there? I would like to have seen him pass. He's manager as well, by the looks of things. It, it, the, the thing for me there, he, he didn't even look. You can't pass what Ian saying is right, but you can't pass if you don't get your head up. Mm -hmm. And that's what quality players do. In that moment, you're in behind and see your heart rate going up. It's like, calm down. Where's my teammate? No, he, he, he just looked to the goal. Hmm. Tottenham's club record signing, North London derby debut for Dominic mm. Solanke. Could he have done better yeah, in that first done. half? It's all about his first touch. Yeah, he has been out for a little while. But these are the things that get a bit rusty. But as soon as that ball comes in there, it's his first touch, it's under his foot. He's got a slide for me. He's got to open his body and get it on the outside of his right side, away from the defender. Mm. And then he just strokes it in the net. Great defending from Salibo. The, 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 the ground he's covered so quickly. But what an opportunity. These big matches, North London die, that's the difference. That first touch, mm. if, it's, if his first touch is right, he gets the shot in. And that's the big, the big difference. But, you know, Spurs have had probably the better, slightly better chances. But I've got to say, I think, I think Arsenal have grown and grown in the game. This is a really good effort because I didn't think he was going to get any purchase on his header. He actually beats Raya. That's in the, if that's uh, inside the uh, post, yeah. that's in the net. It's a yeah. really good effort, Al, isn't it? Yeah, it's a really good effort. But the first one, you've got 10 yards where there's no defender can get to you. You don't need three touches, which is what he's tried to do. The really top players take one touch, move it out of the feet and get the shot away at goal. First one was a great chance. Seven yellow cards, two yeah. of them for this incident. Um, initially from Yuri and Timber, what do we all make of this? I, this, I don't think this is a foul. Um, you know, Timber gets his foot on the ball, he's trying to do that, protecting the ball. I think Poro's reacted very, very poorly. He's, you know, there's nothing wrong with him. There's not... There's not Nowhere near enough contact for him to be rolling around like he is. And then, obviously, the goalkeeper, from his angle, probably thinks that he's caught him. But if you look at it, he's standing on the ball. He's not actually kicked him or he's tried to kick him. I think Porro makes a meal of it. And then the goalkeeper, look, if you look at it from there, Porro's foot comes in and meets it. And I think that what should have happened, like Al said at the start, the referee needed to make people know with the first couple of challenges, no emotions are running high, I want the game to flow. Everybody just yeah. stay calm. But he just started booking people, so that's what he set his precedent. He, he, the, the referee now has handcuffed himself. Yeah. He's put himself in a really awkward position. For me, that one, it, a, a booking or non-booking, even if he had said not a booking, he was just, as a professional, as we know what he was trying to do, he was trying to protect himself. He hasn't gone over the top of the ball. He just put his foot on the ball and, so, and thought, well, if someone's going to get, you know, come and do me, it's going to hit the bottom of my <coughs> studs. We know, we've all done it ourselves. Now, if he had got booked, he's, he's been booked, I'm OK, I'm 50-50 on that call. If he hadn't have been booked, you think, OK, there's others there. Benton Current comes to mind. There's a few there that I'm saying, no way a yellow, yellow card.